Remember the days of getting home from a long day of school as a kid? You had just worked so hard on your spelling test and rolling around on one of those floor scooters in gym class probably ran over your hand a few times. It was a whole day. So now you get home and you throw your backpack to the ground and you grab a high C juice box from the fridge, maybe a packet of fruit gushers to go along with it. And now you just want to turn your little brain off, flop down on the couch in the living room and watch some quality TV. TV shows in the 2000s were so bright bright, colorful, goofy, and nostalgic. There are so many shows that we watched as kids that really stuck with us all the way to adulthood, especially on channels like Nickelodeon, Disney Channel, or PBS Kids. I know some of my all-time favorite shows as a kid were shows like Hannah Montana, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, The Amanda Show, and SpongeBob. I will always love old SpongeBob. I still make old SpongeBob jokes frequently, and there are so many lines from these kids shows that I still reference all of these years later. Shows like Dora the Explorer, The Backyardigans, and Max and Ruby were staples in our preschool years. And then came along iconic shows like That's So Raven, iCarly, and Phineas and Ferb in our elementary school years. All of these shows hold memories that would last a lifetime. But what about the shows you don't remember? What about the ones you kind of remember, but you can't pinpoint the name or remember what the show was about? Kind of like a little fever dream in your head. There are so many shows that we completely forgot about hidden in the back of our subconscious. And that's that's what we're going to be discussing today. My name is Maya Faith and this is your dose of 2000s nostalgia. I'll be reaching into the depths of your mind today and unlocking those childhood memories of all of the 2000s shows you completely forgot about. And there's truly so many that I don't think I can go through every single one in just one video. So today we're going to specifically go through shows that fall under the Nickelodeon umbrella. This means we can discuss shows from Nick Jr., Noggin, and Nickelodeon itself. So if you're looking for shows on Disney Channel, PBS Kids, or Cartoon Network, we can definitely continue to talk about those shows in the next one. This is just my way of keeping it a little bit more organized. I'll also start off with talking about some of the more remembered shows to the ones that are completely forgotten about. Make sure to let me know in the comments which ones you remember the most. Let's begin by talking about some of the shows on Nick Jr. I thought it would be a good place to start with some of the early age preschool year shows and then make our way over to the elementary school years. That right B will Jr. Nick. That's backwards talk for Nick Jr. will be right back. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be swell. It'll be super. It'll be... One scoop of sardine sorbet, please. And a whole lot more, because huh? it's Oswald, the brand new show on Nick Jr. Meet Oswald, the friendliest sea creature in the neighborhood. <gasps> Take that back! Uh, the friendliest sea creature above land, that is. Thank you! Get to know Oswald and all his pals in a special primetime premiere, Monday at 8, 7 central, only on Nickelodeon. Oswald is the first show we're going to discuss today. Oswald is a show about this blue octopus who lives in an apartment complex with his dog Weenie. Get it? <laughs> she looks like a she looks like a hot dog. Oswald has two other friends, Henry the penguin and Daisy the flower. Oswald is really optimistic and patient. Daisy is energetic and adventurous, and Henry is more structured and introverted. The show first premiered on August 20th, 2001. The show had a very chill and laid back at Atmosphere, which I really appreciate since so many children's shows are very high energy, or at least I feel like a lot of them today are. <laughs> Coco Melon. I also loved the Oswald computer games on the Nick Jr. website. Oswald surprisingly only had one season and ended on September 19th, 2003. For only having one season, I feel like it was a really special show and definitely made an impact on the mind of little Maya. Nick Jr. introduces Bob the Builder, a brand new show. Meet Bob. Bob and his team can build or fix almost anything. Can we fix it? Yes, we can! Bob the Builder dropping into Nick Jr. in January. Yes, Bob! You may remember this Candyman, but do you remember the original? Bob the Builder did bounce around a couple of different channels, so it's possible you may have watched the show on other channels like PBS Kids or different ones in the UK, but when I watched the show, it was on Nick Jr. It was originally released on April 12th, 1999 in the UK, but was released 
released in the US on January 15th, 2001. You may not remember the show having accents, which is because the show had both UK and US voice actors. The show is about Bob, who is a builder, as he goes on adventures with his friend Wendy and his crew of construction vehicles. There's Scoop, Muck, Dizzy, Rolly, Lofty, and more. The show also used stop motion animation. You may remember the iconic line from the show where they would shout, can we fix it? And then they would answer, yes, we can. This show was so popular in the 2000s, but I feel like once Handy Manny came into the picture along with the next wave of kids shows, this one was just kind of forgotten about. This show last aired on Nick Jr. in 2004 before it moved over to PBS Kids in 2005. Also, when you look up Bob the Builder, you get this man. Who is this? This is not my Bob. I guess this is the new Bob the Builder that was revamped by Mattel in 2014. Wikipedia also says that an animated theatrical movie adaption of the series was announced in January 2024 that would be produced by Jennifer Lopez with Anthony Ramos as the voice of Bob. I, uh, that was not on my 2024 bingo card. I saw a ferocious beast. You did? So did I. Hello. You can see Maggie and the Ferocious Beast next on Nick Jr. Where I play to life. Maggie and the Ferocious Beast was one of my favorites as a kid. The Canadian show first aired on Nick Jr. on June 5th, 2000, but I honestly remember watching it a lot more on Noggin. Noggin was a channel co-founded by Nickelodeon, so both Noggin and Nick Jr. shared a bunch of the same shows, and they kind of just bounced back and forth over the years. The show is about a five-year-old girl named Maggie who creates her own map of an imaginary world called Nowhere Land. It's kind of a cryptic name in all honesty. Maggie's best friends are also imaginary characters named Beast and Hamilton. Maggie is adventurous and compassionate. The Beast is actually sweet and gentle and not at all ferocious. And Hamilton is a snooty little- um, <clears throat> Sorry, Hamilton is a little bit bossy and fusses over some small things along the way. One of my all time favorite episodes was where they discovered the land of cake and they spend time like eating every single one that they can get their hands on. I literally dream about that place. I wanted to go there so bad as a kid and the cartoon cake looked so good. The show had three seasons, which were released up until June 9th of 2002, and then reruns were added to Noggin in 2003. The show continued to air those reruns all the way up until the Nick Jr. rebrand in 2010. That's a long time to show reruns. I'm honestly surprised. Apparently, on March 18th, 2021, the show announced a revival was to come called The Ferocious Beast Show. It was supposed to air around 2022 or 2023, but I haven't seen any further updates on this. Uh -huh. Meet Maisie. She's a mouse. Hello. That's hello in mouse talk. Hello. What? Hello. Oh, Maisie wants to tell you a little about herself. Hello. She has friends named Tallulah and Panda. Hello. She was a zebra for a costume party. Hello. And she's the same age as you. Hello. In mouse years. Hello. Maisie invites you to join her. Today at 1.30, 12.30 Central, only on Nick Jr. Maisie. Oh, I loved Maisie as a kid. Maisie first aired on February 11th, 2009. The show revolved around Maisie Mouse and her friends Cyril the Squirrel, Alula the Chick, Charlie the Crocodile, and Eddie the Elephant. All of the characters speak in this made up animal language and a narrator speaks for them and helps the audience to understand what they're saying. The show was also based on the book series by Lucy Cousins with the same art style. I really adored this show. I don't know what it was. Maisie was just such a cute character and I just loved seeing how she would interact with her friends. I feel like there were just a lot of satisfying sounds and episodes that just had preschool me locked in. I had a memory pop up in my head of a Maisie computer game that I used to play. I specifically remember setting up for some birthday party and having Maisie and her friends pin the tail on a donkey. This game was so entertaining as a kid. I miss old computer games. Maisie last aired on Nick Jr. on December 25th of 2001 with only one season. The reruns were broadcasted on not until November 11th of 2007. I'm surprised at how many of these what I feel are iconic shows only had one season. Crazy. All right, so everyone remembers Dora the Explorer. A lot of people remember Go Diego Go, but where 
are the people that watched Nihao Kai Lan? Was I one of them? Not entirely. <laughs> I watched a little bit of the show, but I was just growing out of the Nick Jr. shows at the time that this was airing. But Kai Lan deserves some love too, damn it. Nihao Kai Lan premiered on Nick Jr. on February 8th, 2007. The show is about the adventures of a six year old Chinese American girl named Kai Lan and her animal friends. Her friends consist of Rintu, the Bengal tiger, Tolly, the koala, Lulu, the rhino, and Ho Ho, the monkey. Kai Lan often breaks the fourth wall and talks to the audience at home. He also teaches kids the Mandarin Chinese language, similar to the way Dora functions as a show. I always thought the animation of the show was super cute and inviting. I think if I would have been a little younger at the time, I would have really enjoyed it. The show only ran for three seasons and ended on August 21st, 2011. Discover the world according to Olivia every day. Rule of life number 114. Be nice to your toys and stuffed animals because one day they may end up helping your best friend. Hey world, I'm Celery. Olivia, every day on Nick okay, Move aside, Peppa Pig. This bitch walked. She fucking strutted that runway, mama, so that Peppa could run. Olivia was a show that aired on Nick Jr. on January 26th of 2009. It was a show based on the book series Olivia. I read those books as a small and I thought they were really funny. I was not in the age range for the show when it aired on TV, but I remember thinking it was probably going to be a great kids show just based on how I loved the books. Poor girl only got two seasons compared to Miss Peppa Pig, who's been kicking it for the last 20 years. Literally 20 years this year. That's wild to me. Olivia is a sweet and funny little pig who uses her imagination to fantasize about living different roles. She often imagines herself as a pop star or a superhero. The show mainly focuses on Olivia as she finds herself in everyday situations with her family. It's unclear why the show only had two seasons, but I wonder if the animation didn't work as well with young viewers. It definitely doesn't feel as bright and friendly as the Peppa Pig series. Regardless, our girl Olivia deserves her time to shine too. So narrowing the shows down for Noggin alone was actually Actually really difficult. There are a lot more shows on Noggin that I just feel are a lot more forgotten or just not talked about as much anymore. I don't think a lot of the Noggin shows aired for as long as some of the other ones did. you know how to handle your imaginary remote the upside down show just press play premieres monday october 16th at 11 a.m eastern only on noggin i swear every time i ask if someone remembers the show no one does. That may be because the show only ran for one season with 13 episodes. The show aired on Noggin on October 16th, 2006. Which actually, now that I think about it, doesn't make a lot of sense. Just based off of my memory, I know my memory is not everything. Wikipedia says 2006, so I could be the one wrong here. But I genuinely remember seeing this show air for the first time in 2008. Regardless, the Upside Down show is about these two Australian brothers, Dave and and Shane, their real names by the way, who live in a strange apartment building with multiple odd doors with unusual rooms. They have an imaginary remote control that they give to the viewers that when pressed affects all of the characters and their environment. Two use a lot of imagination and illusion. I remember the two performing more like mimes with invisible objects around them and using their mouths to create sound effects. Dave Collins and Shane Dundas were also the creators of the show as it was based off of their live comedy act called Speed Mouse. The upside Upside Down Show did well with critics and won three awards, but still was not picked up for a second season and last aired in February 2007. In August 2008, it was announced that a movie was in the works. It was to act as a proper series finale for the show, but unfortunately the project just didn't receive enough outside support to begin filming. Jack? Jack? Woo! <laughs> now that's what I call a musical journey! <laughs> well, you've seen the clubhouse, you've met Mary and Mel. Well, I guess that leaves only one thing left to do. What's that, Jack? 
Let's rock this clubhouse! Yippee! Now this one really feels like a fever dream. Jack's Big Music Show was a musical series that was produced for Noggin, but you may have also seen it pop up here and there on Nick Jr. as well. First episode was released on September 12th, 2005. The show was about these puppets named Jack, best friend Mary, and his dog Mel, who also plays the drums. They hang out and play music together in Jack's clubhouse. The entire show is surrounded by music, if you hadn't guessed that already. The show usually features different musical artists for children like Lori Berkner and oh my god, baby Leon Thomas. Oh my gosh, she's so small here. I also remember specifically this little girl singing this song. I thought she slayed so hard as a kid and it makes sense now knowing that she's actually the voice of Uniqua from the Backyardigans. Jack's Big Music Show ran for two seasons Seasons and ended on October 13th, 2007. Deep in the woods of Sunny Patch lives a family of bugs. That's right, they're Miss Spider's Sunny Patch friends, and they're coming to Nick Jr. every weekday. Squirt, Bounce, Shimmer, Dragon, Wiggle, Spinner, and the twins Pansy and Snowdrop. They've got a bug's eye view of the big wide world. Miss Spider's Sunny Patch Friends is not talked about enough and we must talk about it today. It's the world's longest TV show name for a kid to say, so I normally just shortened it to Miss Spider or Sunny Patch, whatever worked. This was a British-Canadian children's show that aired in the US on September 7th, 2004. I feel a bit gaslit because the internet is telling me that it mainly aired on Nick Jr., but I remember watching most of it on Noggin. Is my brain okay? Either way, it was on both channels at one point or another. The show actually started with a television movie called Miss Spider's Sunny Patch Kids, which aired on Treehouse TV in Canada. It was based off of David Kirk's books and another little unlocked memory for you. He was the author and illustrator of these books that I loved as a kid, specifically Little Bird, Fiddle Bird. The animation in the show was a little bit frightening at times, but again, this was just a case of carrying the stylization of Kirk's book illustrations into a 3D animated space. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. The show is about Miss Spider as she raises her family of both spiders and other adopted bugs. Storylines will often bounce around its focus to each of the different spider children and the many adventures they get into. You may also recognize this horrifying face. Handsome Squidward looking ass spideress. James Charles, whatever you want to call him. He's a character that's jealous that Miss Spider didn't want to get it on with him, so he often is just seen talking shit about all of these small children. There was also a Nintendo DS game made for the show called Harvest Time Hop and Fly, which is pretty cool to see. This spider aired repeats all the way up until December 12th of 2014, which I'm really surprised by. Maybe the show is a lot more memorable than I thought. Hello there, my cuddly comrades. Z and I are so excited because Miffy and her friends are going to the zoo. I hear that Miffy is especially excited about seeing the new baby zebra. Personally, I can't wait to see the lions. Roar. And as you might imagine, my pal Z is rather partial to penguins. You can see all your favorite animals when you tag along with Miffy and her friends on their zoo-rific adventure. Hooray! It's a special trip your preschooler won't want to miss. Watch the Miffy goes to Miffy and friends. Oh my gosh, my girl Miffy. Miffy is such an icon even today, but I feel like nobody remembers her show on Noggin. This is how I was first introduced to her as a character. For those who don't know, Miffy is a cartoon rabbit who was created in 1955, and she appeared in a bunch of picture books that were written and illustrated by Dick Brunna. Miffy as a character became incredibly popular, and she's often compared to Sanrio's Hello Kitty character. On April 7th, 2003, a show starring the iconic character called Miffy and Friends was aired on Noggin. The show was animated in stop motion, and I I would be lying to you all if I told you that small Maya didn't want to bite into these claymation characters. I'm sorry, but do these rabbits not look slightly edible to you? show revolves around Miffy and her main friends are Snuffy the dog, Melanie the bunny, Boris the bear, and Poppy the pig. A narrator helps to tell her stories as the characters are not seen speaking in the show. The show really reminded me of Maisie. Even as a kid, I used to compare them and think that they were pretty similar. Miffy and friends lasted for three seasons and ended on March 30th. 30th, 2005. There's one tweenie, two tweenies, three tweenies, four. You counted the tweenies, now I'll tell you more. They've got their own playgroup and you can come too. Every time they're together, they learn something new. Like 
like how to use windmills or why the stars glow or what kind of colors are in a rainbow. They count and explore and pretend just like you do. They draw and make things and play games just like you do. They dance and they sing and tell stories like you do. I think I know why and I think you do too. I think it's because you're not big or little. I think it's because you're right in the middle. So now can you guess oh my is it true? It is. You're right. You're a tweeny too. This show is a fever dream and a horror film all in one. These things were scary as a kid. Look at it. No, look, look at that. Tweenies is a live action British puppet show that follows four preschool aged characters known as the tweenies. There's Bella, Milo, Fizz, and Jake. Characters dance, sing, play, and learn. The show originally aired in 1999, but it appeared on Noggin in April of 2003 and lasted up until September of 2005, which is really interesting. I don't remember it lasting that long. It probably didn't air as often in the United States compared to the 390 episodes it apparently had. I'm actually confused by this number. You're telling me from September 6th, 1999 to December 31st, 1999, 85 episodes were aired? I have to be missing something here. There are 116 days between those months, so an episode was coming out like every other day? The show was that lit in the UK? I'm lost. This is nothing compared to Barney. Oh my god, there's a Tweenies PlayStation game. Also, apparently Noggin aired a different version of the show with the characters' voices dubbed over with Canadian actors. I'm learning so much. Let me know if you guys remember this one at all. Hi there. C and I are learning how to do what Connie and her animal friends do. Can you hop, hop, hop like a frog? And dig, dig, dig like a mole. Fly and fly like the birds in the sky. And creep around like a snail. Can you swim, swim, swim the way a fish swims? Squirm, squirm, squirm the way a worm squirms. Chew, chew, chew the way that beavers do. Or make like a cow and make milk. Learn something new about what animals do on Connie the Cow. Connie the Cow. You are lying to me if you tell me you remember Connie the Cow. This one was absolutely locked away in the depths of my mind. I honestly don't even fully remember the episodes themselves, but I remember seeing this silly British blue cow wandering around my TV screen. The show is actually Spanish Canadian and was brought over to Noggin and released on September 8th, 2003. The show revolves around Connie the Cow as she explores the colorful world around her. There's also a narrator that explains Connie's curious thought process as she goes on little adventures with her friends. The animation for the show is an interesting one. It's very flat and they almost move two-dimensionally, if that makes any sense. It feels like they can only move left or right. I never really loved this show as a kid, but I'm sure there's some nostalgic friends out there that did. The show lasted three seasons and ended on March 30th, 2007. Come on, Pink, think! Nagi knows storytelling is immensely valuable for preschoolers when it comes to sparking the imagination, understanding narrative structure... I love making up stories. ...and building vocabulary. Scoop Anderson! So we've got Pinky Dinky Doo, the little girl with the big stories to help your child develop early literacy skills. That's Pinky Dinky Doo. Pinky Dinky Doo, little girl, big stories. Catch the premiere next Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, only on Noggin. This theme song got stuck in my head all of the time. Pinky Dinky Doo aired on Discovery Kids in Latin America on April 5th, 2005, but it was picked up by Noggin in 2006. The show is about a girl named Pinky who has a big imagination and loves to tell stories. Each episode revolves around Pinky sitting with her little brother, Tyler, and pet guinea pig as she'll make up a story. Usually the stories were made up in order to help her little brother out with a problem. She also could never settle on just one catchphrase, ever. I'm making up stories. Oh, but you can make up a story too. Are you gonna make up a story? Yes, sir, Rudy Positoni. Oh, that's something you don't see every day. You need to think big. I swear she had like 50. The show was really cute and I very much related to it when I was a kid. Not the part where her head expands to the size of a hot air balloon, but I'm the oldest sibling in my family and I was always trying to come up with fun and interactive games and stories to tell my little siblings. I remember trying to replicate this show and trying to create a little clubhouse for my brothers. I would sit there and draw up stories for them and try to take them along the imaginative adventure. The show ran on Noggin until September 25th of 2009 
and then ran on Nick Jr. until April 8th of 2011. Hello, dear friends. Someone new is coming to Noggin. Hello, I'm Lucy. And oh yeah, she's bringing friends. That's Georgina, the giraffe. And that's Nelson. That's Reginald the Lion. And oh, there's Henrietta Hippo. And that's Giggles and Tickles. I'm never sure which is which. And that's Ed Zebra. And that's... Ooh, maybe you should come and meet them all yourself. 64 Zoo Lane premieres next Monday at 9.30 and at 4.30 with a brand new episode every day this month. Another one where the theme song was always stuck in my brain. 64 Zoo Lane is about a seven-year-old girl named Lucy who lives next to a zoo. Every night, Georgina the giraffe brings her over to the zoo where all of her animal friends will tell her a story before bed. I used to really like this one. They all had British accents, which tickled my small childhood brain just like Peppa Pig. I really liked to see a little girl as the main character interacting with lots of different animal friends. It also felt very calm and comforting and was the perfect kids show to watch before bedtime. The show actually originally aired on February 18th of 1999 in the UK, ran for two seasons ending in 2003, and then had a seven year hiatus before making its return from 2010 to 2013. The show was picked up on Noggin in the United States and ran from January 3rd of 2005 to September 28th of 2009. I'm actually surprised to see that it lasted as as long as it did in the United States, considering I feel like nobody remembers this one. Okay, last but not least for Noggin. I'm going to bring up one that I swear is completely forgotten. While I was doing research for this video, it popped right back into my memory and I was so excited about it. Hey Bert, are you ready for our play date? Yeah, I think so, honey. Um, is everybody here? Uh, I, I am here. Hi, Prairie Dawn. Where, where's Grover? Grover, oh, oh my God, for Bucky! I'm coming! I'm coming! I'm coming! Whoa! Uh-oh. <laughs> well, Ernie, that's everyone. Wait a second, Bert. We're missing someone. Hmm? Oh, of course we are! You! Noggin presents a brand new way to Sesame. Play with me, Sesame! Play with me, Sesame. No, I'm not talking about Sesame Street. That's a show that everybody already knows. It's been running since 1969. We all know that one. I'm talking about Play With Me, Sesame. It was created by both Nickelodeon and Sesame Workshop for the Noggin channel. The show starred our favorite Sesame Street characters, Bert, Ernie, Grover, and Prairie Dawn. Oh my god, I completely forgot that was her name, and I loved her as a kid. It was meant to mimic a playdate experience with your favorite Muppet Pals. The show would bounce back and forth between one of the characters having a specific segment, such as Ernie Says or Bert playing on his computer, and also showcasing clips from Sesame Street. I really enjoyed the Bert segments on the show. It was really satisfying to watch him draw pictures on the computer with oatmeal or play games with the cartoon pigeons. The show was also genuinely funny, I'm sorry. Let's play a game with rhyme. Race going, Bert, oh, ring my chime. I don't want to do it. There's really nothing to it. It's so silly. A boy named Billy. Ernie, Bernie, stop it. Mop it. Oh, I want to thank you, yo! Like, I'm entertained at my grown age. I mean, you can't go wrong with Sesame Street. The show ran for three seasons, ending on September 2nd of 2007. Meet Ginger. Junior high is like a jungle. It's got predators. <laughs> They're prey. Uh -huh. A few unclassified species. Trade dentures with you? No way! They still have prune in them. Oh. And me, trying to survive without becoming extinct. Don't miss the premiere of As Told by Ginger, coming October 25th to Nickelodeon. As told by Ginger, someone once told me the grass is much greener on the other side. Banger. This show deserved better. Also, I don't care what anyone says. I love this animation. I know a lot of people think it's ugly. It just feels so 2000s and nostalgic. The show first aired on Nickelodeon on October 25th, 2000. It's a coming of age style cartoon about a junior high schooler named Ginger. She's in that preteen era of her life where she's learning about herself, her insecurities, who her true friends are, and the crushes that she has. Girl was going through it all. The show starts off with the characters in seventh grade and season by season they 
move up to a freshman in high school, which I think is really cool. We don't usually see cartoons progress with age. The characters also changed clothes every episode as well, giving the whole show a more realistic feeling. We were growing with these characters. Even as a small child watching this show, I obviously wasn't Ginger's age, but I really looked up to her as a character. She had a very kind and relatable personality. The show tackles subjects that teens can relate to, such as popularity, dating, jealousy, insecurities, and friendship betrayal. But the show wasn't afraid to tackle some more serious subjects as well, like addiction, mental health, and even death. The characters themselves also show growth and development as time goes on. As told by Ginger lasted for three seasons and ended with a television movie in 2004. Hey, do you ever watch Nickelodeon? Isn't that a kid's network? Yes, but it's got this show, The Wild Thornberries. Is it about a kid? Yeah. See? Kids Network. Yes, but she's a kid who can talk to animals. Animals? Talk to animals? Yeah. Her name is Eliza. She travels with her family. She likes adventure. Adventure, huh? And her best friend is a chimp. Chimp? Nickelodeon's got a chimp? Tell me more. The Wild Thornberries on Nickelodeon, the number one network for kids. And chimps. I feel like more people might remember this one more than As Told by Ginger, mainly because of the memes. The Wild Thornberries first aired on September 1st, 1998 and lasted about five seasons, ending on June 11th, 2004. The show was about the Thornberry family, who loved to travel the world documenting wildlife. The main focus centers on their 12-year-old daughter, Eliza, who was a secret gift to communicate with animals. She's also traveling with her filmmaker parents, her teenage sister, Debbie, who's often annoyed with her family's lifestyle, Donnie, a feral boy from the wild that the Thornberries adopted. We saw him speaking earlier. <laughs> And finally, their pet chimpanzee Darwin, who Eliza is able to have full conversations with. The show had its very own movie that was released in theaters in 2002. And the Thornberries also had a crossover movie with the Rugrats, appropriately named Rugrats Go Wild. This was definitely a fun one that deserves to be talked about more. And now, introducing Nick's newest Nicktoons, brother, sister, team Reggie and Otto Rocket. Reggie! She's got smart sass and a mean set of skates. You go, Rocket Girl! He's got speed, stamina, and spunk. Who's with me? Roll with these supreme siblings and their friends Twister and Sam in the brand new Nicktoon where extreme friendship meets extreme action. Rocket power! Coming in three weeks to the best place to turn for new tunes. Another Nickelodeon cartoon that's been lost to time is none other than Rocket Power. First released on August 16th, 1999, Rocket Power is about four skateboarding friends who love extreme sports. There's Otto, the skilled and courageous leader of the group, his older sister Reggie, who's an inspiring author alongside her athletic talent, Twister, Otto's best friend and videographer, who's also more of the gullible and oblivious one, and finally Squid, who's the clumsy and timid one, but what he lacks in athletic ability, he makes up for an intelligence. The four of them spend time skateboarding, snowboarding, and surfing in the fictional beach town of Ocean Shores, California. This one I wasn't really into as a kid. Definitely remember being annoyed when this one would come on my TV. Sorry Rocket Power fans, I just couldn't relate at all. I'm not the sporty type. But I will also say the theme song really did go hard. The show ended on July 30th, 2004 with four seasons. Catch an encore of the newest My Life as a Teenage Robot. Bring it on. Laser limb. This is a fury crossbow. We came to invite Jenny to the fair. Mom? Sorry. Come on, Doc. I doubt anybody will even notice her. <laughs> presentation of the newest My Life is a Teenage Robot tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. 6.30 Central on Nickelodeon. Finally, my girl. As you can see, I am very excited to talk about Miss Jenny today. My Life as a Teenage Robot is about a teenage robot. The show first aired on August 1st, 2003. XJ9, or Jenny as she prefers to be called, is a robot that was built by her mom, Dr. Nora Wakeman. Jenny was also made to protect Earth and fight off crime, as her robot body is completely armed with weapons and other devices. But Jenny just wants to be a normal teenage girl. Jenny's friends are her next door neighbor, Brad, and his little brother, Tuck. I absolutely loved this show. Jenny as a character is just so fun and interesting. She definitely had Powerpuff Girl potential. 
essential. I just absolutely adored her design. I also really enjoyed the style of animation on this show. There's also a few pretty iconic episodes, and by iconic, I mean horrifying. The show's second episode is called Raggedy Android. Jenny wants to go to the carnival with her friends, but doesn't want everyone to be afraid of her or uncomfortable with her presence as a robot. She just wants to be a normal girl, so her mom offers to work on a human suit for her. We see in this episode that this human suit ends up looking straight out of a horror movie, and she scares all of the people at the carnival anyway. Later on in the season, we get the return of Raggedy Android. Again, we see Jenny just wanting to hang out with her friends at a milkshake bar and getting tossed out by the owner for being a robot. She asks her mom again about the old human suit, and her mom has now made some upgrades to it some very creepy upgrades. The suit ends up working though and everyone treats Jenny like a normal girl until it starts to get a mind of its own. Like, look at that thing. That is pure nightmare fuel. The suit continues to latch onto her and Jenny tries to take back control of it. It's creepy, but probably one of the best episodes in the whole show. At least it's one of the most memorable. The show sadly only lasted three seasons with the third season only airing on Nicktoons in 2008, which makes sense because I didn't think the show was even on past 2005. This show honestly had a lot of potential and deserved more. The show ended on May 2nd, 2009. And now, go behind the counter for an exclusive look at Nick's newest show, Mr. Meaty. I think the location is universally understood. People know about malls. Josh is trying to be cool. I've got like a day to turn you into a lady talking machine. Mostly he likes girls, music, and uh, hanging out. He's very opposite from Parker. I like the snack. This is Ashley One. Her biggest line is... <laughs> We purposely went out to find really interesting people. Their personalities definitely show through in the characters. It's a grungier looking show, but I think that's going to grab people. Nick's brand new show, Mr. Meaty, premieres Friday, September 22nd at 8.30. Speaking of cursed episodes, the ones in this show probably takes the cake. This is another fever dream that definitely traumatized a lot of 2000s kids. I didn't ask for this. You didn't ask for this. This was forced upon us. And now it's time to re-traumatize you. Mr. Meaty first aired on Nickelodeon on September 22nd, 2006. The show revolves around these two teenage puppet characters named Josh and Parker. Josh is the cool and popular one, while Parker is the nerdy and awkward one. They both work together inside of a shopping mall at a fast food restaurant called Mr. Meaty. I don't really know how to describe the plot of the show other than the two just work at this restaurant and constant chaos ensues. This is what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just met. I feel like I've known you for years. If this didn't frighten you as a small child, I don't know what would. The show ran for two seasons and ended on May 23rd, 2009. Thank God. one of my favorite forgotten shows. No one out here is talking about Chalk Zone. Chalk Zone was introduced to us on March 22nd, 2002. We follow the main character, Rudy, who discovers a magical box of chalk that allows him to draw portals into the Chalk Zone. The Chalk Zone is an alternate dimension where anything that was drawn on the chalkboard and erased has been brought to life. Rudy has the power to use his chalk to draw anything to help him along his adventures. He's accompanied by his friend, Penny, who's a classmate with him in the real world, and a superhero Rudy once Drew named Snap. I used to really enjoy this show because as an artist myself, I really loved the idea of being able to draw something and it just came to life. Although it's a little questionable in that one Spongebob Doodle Bob episode. It won't be me! <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, that's, that's, I didn't want, I don't want that. Fox Zone felt exciting, creative, and full of adventure. It lasted for four seasons, ending on August 23rd, 2008. Again, this is another situation of the show coming to a halt in 2005 and airing the remainder of its fourth season three years later after its cancellation. I also wouldn't be surprised if the show ended up airing on Nicktoons at the time. That's where all of the Nick shows just would like go to die. Another show that deserved more. Nickelodeon's got the ultimate brawl in the school hall. It's Nanette Manoir, the Queen of Mean, versus Angela Anaconda, the Princess of Payback. Excuse me, Angela. Watch out for that tree. It's all downstream from here. <laughs> out of my way. If you get out of my way, Nanette Manoir. It's the ultimate face-off on Angela Anaconda. Today at 3.30, 2.30 Central. Only on Nickelodeon. It'll knock you out. Oh, you guys want another abomination? Mr. Meaty wasn't enough for you? Well, meet Mr. Meaty's rival, Angela Anaconda. I remember the day I saw an episode come on Nickelodeon for the first time. It's one of the most random shows I'd ever witnessed, and somehow I was genuinely invested. It might have one of the worst intros, though, for a Nickelodeon show. My name is Angela, hey hello, welcome to my very own show. My ears are bleeding. Angela Anaconda released on Nickelodeon on October 4th, 1999. The show stars Angela, an imaginative and tomboyish eight-year-old girl who lives in a fictional town called Tapwater Springs. Angela's main friends are Gina and Johnny, and Angela's arch nemesis on the show is named Nanette. She kind of stars as Angela's total opposite with a hyper feminine look and personality. Angela's also like super obsessed with her throughout the show. When I was going through some of the clips of the show, I was just like, Angela, do you really have a crush on this girl? Because you're literally obsessed with everything she says and does. I'm here for it, honestly. The show is animated in a very different and unique way. They took real photos of kids' face models and kind of mashed them together into a more stylized and cartoony look. The animation is also kind of two-dimensional and flat like South Park, but also was animated in a 3D software. I was able to learn more about the show from a creator I found on YouTube under the name Amazon Kane. She also also seems to believe that Angela could also have a crush on Annette, so I'm glad I wasn't alone in that theory. But if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the show and how it was made, I highly recommend checking out some of the videos on her channel. Angela Anaconda ended on December 10th, 2001 with three seasons. Here is the story of a furry coated yak. He wants to do his comedy, but doesn't have an act. He has the guts and has the dreams and has an agency. He also has a friend whose head is ripe and quite to see. He's half pineapple. Watch his five pants and his crazy hair, the loony scientist. And don't forget the wrestler with the puppets on his fist. Cause wacky zany characters are not a thing they lack. And their mascot is a goofy guy named Yakety Yak. Yakety Yak. Only on Nicktoon. All right, I know there's still some people out there like Maya. I already knew most of these shows. I remember every single one you've said. Please give me something that was actually wiped from my subconscious. All right, Sassy, calm down. I know no one remembers this show. At least I don't think so. I've never had a conversation with someone who has, so that's what I'm going this is that's what this is based off of yakety yak who remembers yakety yak do i remember a single episode of this show a single plot or character name no absolutely not but you know what i do remember the intro. I actually think it's funny that the comments on this video are saying the same thing that I did. The show itself was clearly not memorable, but it had a catchy song. Fun fact, apparently the theme song is actually a modified version of the song Yakety Yak by The Coasters. Yakety Yak aired on Nickelodeon on November 9th, 2002 for a whopping one season. Yakety is a high school student who works as the school mascot and dreams of being a comedian. His friends are Keo, a pineapple, and Lemony, a human girl. This feels like AI wrote it because what's happening? Why is everyone else a human in the show? I'm a little confused. Maybe I need to dive into the lore of this one because I don't know what's going on. Yakety Yak ended a little over a year later on December 12th, 2003. All right, we went through so many different shows today and I'm sure there are plenty out there that I missed. Not to mention plenty of other shows that are lost to time on different channels like Disney Channel, Cartoon Network, and so much more. So if there are more shows that you know of that you'd like for me to talk about, definitely let me know in the comments. I hope that I was able to unlock some memories that you completely forgot that you had. Also, let me know which one of these Nick shows was your favorite too. I hope everyone enjoyed the video and if you did, please remember to hit the like button 
button and subscribe if you can. Leaving a like and subscribing to the channel will really help me to be able to make more nostalgic content for you guys. And I'm absolutely loving it so far. I'm really hoping that you guys are loving the videos too. I'm always interested to hear what you guys have to say about it and I hope I can continue to spark some more 2000s memories for you all. Also, make sure to check me out on Instagram and Twitter at MyFaithDraws if you want to see what I'm up to in the meantime. Thank you all so much and I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Bye!